Okay, good evening. This is a thermostatic radiator valve. Uh, I have lots of these in my house. And I'm sure there's lots of you guys have them in your houses too. They're not exactly exciting. That's my bedroom, right there. Okay, so what are we trying to solve with OpenTRV? We're trying to introduce a new type of thermostatic radiator valve. We'd like to have this device in every single room in your house talking to a thermostatic uh, radiator valve that is radio controlled and then saving you guys energy. So according to deck figures, heating is 60% of your energy bill. That's a vast amount of your energy bill. And then the other problem is that we need to retrofit this in everybody's houses. It's pointless trying to put this in new build only, heat pumps or similar kind of stuff. We really need to get this in everybody's house if we're going to properly save carbon emissions. So there's a magic number there which uh, I made up earlier today. Uh, it's, it's rather large. Um, but that's the kind of market that we're talking about if this can work. Now, our target is 50% energy reduction for your heating bill with this device and our magic radio-controlled thermostatic radiator valves. Now, in general, most people have empty rooms in their houses that they're heating regularly because they just don't turn the radiator valves off when they walk out the room. This will turn it off for you because if you don't keep pressing the button, it'll reduce the heat. It's the opposite of all this automatic will keep the temperature in the room nice for you. If you don't press the button, you'll lose the heat. So we like to think of it as a nice warm bubble of heat that follows you around the house because you have to keep pressing the little red button as you move around. So first question, is it easy to use? Can a four-year-old use it? Could my granny use it? Okay, if it's just a big red button, and this is our first uh, version that we've got in a box, we actually want to have a version with one big red button on the top, which will be much more fun. You can think of it as a detonator for a building falling down or something. That's the image we've got. It needs to be cheap. We're not going to get this into enough houses unless it's properly cheap. And we think that we can produce this at a similar price to what you currently have on your radiators now. And then we need to retrofit it. It's pointless if we don't. So, next thing, we're giving this away. We're not the ones that necessarily have to manufacture these and have them appear on the shelves in your DIY shop, get fitted by people who come and fit uh, the heating systems in your house. So, all our software is open source under Apache license, all our hardware is open source under the solder pad license, which, if you don't know it, is pretty similar. It's about the most similar open hardware license you can have, similar to the Apache license. And the 3D box design is also open source under Apache. But our problem is, how do we kickstart this? So at the moment, our current state is, we're four designs into the PCB. So this was our third PCB inside there. Our fourth one's in this one. Uh, the microcontroller software, it's got a few bugs here and there, but we're getting there with it. Uh, we have some documentation to give to users. Uh, we, run our mailing list and IRC, we've got the websites, we've got the magic 3D box design. If anyone wants to come and check out some 3D printed stuff, I've got some boxes to play with. Uh, if you want to check them out, they're quite interesting. And just yesterday, we were getting these boxes printed at a model engineering exhibition at Sandown Park. Uh, this is Malcolm from the uh, Thames Valley RepRap user group. And you can see his uh, 3D printer in the background there. And on it, it are the four sections of one of these boxes. And he was printing them over the three days of the exhibition. So we've got nine boxes out of it. They're pretty slow to print, but they do the business. That's the four-year-old, by the way, in the photo that needs to be able to use this. Um, stuff that we've found so far whilst we've been developing this project, and these are the takeaways um, from this uh, little lightning talk. Take care with your funding applications. Um, you can spend an awful lot of time doing funding applications and they don't work. You don't get the money that you're looking for. And they can really suck time and energy out of your project. Um, community management has been an interesting one for us. Um, we've been extremely open with everything we're doing and we try and be more open than we currently are. 
Um, and we found that that's actually quite a good antidote. We're a small community. We're six people are doing most of the work on this at the moment. Uh, we're looking for volunteers. And um, we found that openness helps. Having a common cause helps, and it reminds people to stay on track when that IRC channel gets a bit heated. Um, and then the other thing is, with the prototyping, we found the guys at Thames Valley Rep Rat Group have been fabulous. Um, if you've ever 3D printed, it's a tricky business, and they're pretty good at it. Um, they're not the most solid technology. Um, they tend to go a little bit wrong. At any time, we've always had one of our printers dead, uh, not printing, so they helped us a lot. Um, we've generally had uh, interest in the last month. We've had uh, four different countries inquiring, people just saying, how can I build this myself? You know, have you got any kit for us? Um, we took part in the Connecting Homes and the Dynamic Demand Hackathon. Now, back in September, there was probably Chris standing here advertising these things. Um, members from our team took part in both. Um, our feedback from that would be that Connecting Homes was... Uh, Interesting. Um, it was definitely something that ended up towards British Gas, and if you had something that interested British Gas, you're going to bubble up to the top of the list. And also, it helps if you are fairly well advanced in what you're trying to produce. Um, the dynamic demand hackathon didn't quite work for us. We fell at the first hurdle. Our idea for that, which wasn't open TRV, it was something else. Um, that one wasn't going to produce enough energy saving for uh, the hackathon aims. And so uh, we lost out on that one, but you know, there are other good ideas that worked. Um, we started a trial for OpenTRV with Kingston University today. We had Damon, who's the um, leader of the project, was installing into uh, a couple of people's houses, a professor and a doctor from uh, Kingston University. They're going to be running our trial th from January through to April. Uh, we continue to work on this all the time. Um, we're hoping to build some Valve hardware next year. Um, if there's any industrial designers out there, give me a shout, please. Um, we also would like to have some hobbyist and DIY kits for sale so you can build these yourself and install them yourself for sale next year. Um, and if anybody is a lawyer or knows a lawyer and wants to donate their time and loves dealing with patents, <laughs> give us a shout. Okay, that's us, and if you're going to FOSDEM, look out for us. I won't be there. All the rest of the team's going. They're leaving me behind to man the fort here, um, and get hold of us there. Cool, thank, thank you. you.